National Strategy for Financial Inclusion Now Reserve Bank of India has released the National Strategy of Financial Inclusion for India 2019 to 2024 Financial inclusion it is a key driver for growth and poverty alleviation all over the world Financial inclusion has been defined as the process of ensuring access to financial services timely and adequate credit for vulnerable groups such as weaker sections and low income groups at an affordable cost access to formal finance can boost job creation reduce vulnerability to economic shocks and increase investment in human capital Financial inclusion is increasingly being recognized as a key driver for economic growth and poverty alleviation all over the world. 7 of the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals of 2030 view financial inclusion as a key enabler for achieving sustainable development worldwide. An inclusive financial system supports stability, integrity, and equitable growth therefore financial inclusion needs to be eliminated exclusion needs to be eliminated financial exclusion leaves the disadvantage in low income segments of the society with no choice other than informal options it makes them vulnerable to financial distress debt and poverty So basically the concept behind financial inclusion is to bring the people who do not have access to banks into the ambit of banking. So the poor people, the farmer who are financially excluded, they do not have any communication with the bank. They don't have a bank account. They don't have Aadhaar card. They are only and only dependent upon the money lenders. who exploit them by charging high rate of interest so what are the causes of financial exclusion lack of surplus income so the people who do not have surplus income they more over do not require banking services because whatever they earn they consume not suitable to customer requirements many a times financial inclusion that is the banking services are not suitable to poor people lack of requisite documents most of the times the poor people and farmers don't have documents as identity proof address proof to show as a proof for opening the account lack of awareness about the project because of illiteracy and not a non awareness of the banking services they do not avail the services they feel that uh, opening a bank account is a worry it's a trouble you will waste a lot of time the amount of time you will go and use to open a bank account the same amount of time you can earn livelihood for that particular day lack of trust in the system poor people do not trust banking system they feel that they will take their money they will not return their money high transaction cost now since the poor people have very less amount of money to save or to invest every transaction they do has high transaction cost because the amount is less so the bank has to incur high transaction cost remoteness of service provider this is a major issue most of the villages do not have access to a bank branch so they have to travel a lot of distance to reach a branch and the same distance they can travel to get work for that particular day so they will always choose to get work than to go to a bank to open a banking account poor quality of services rendered most of the times the services which has been provided in the rural areas is not up to the mark so what is the strategy <coughs> how does rbi uh wants to make a change wants to bring more people into financial uh sector 
Now, the strategy aims to provide access to formal financial services in an affordable manner, deepening financial inclusion and promoting financial literacy and consumer protection. So there are different strategies. First is to provide access to formal financial services means banking account, affordable manner means you do not have to spend a lot of money. Third, you need to deepen the financial inclusion. That means you need to reach out to the people who are in villages and promote financial literacy. You need to create awareness about banking services. And finally, you need to protect the consumers. Now, it sets forth the vision and key objectives of the financial inclusion policies in India to help expand and sustain the financial inclusion process at national level. Okay. The strategy seeks to address the inherent barriers of access to gamut of financial products and services. The strategy has been prepared by Reserve Bank of India under the Ages of Financial Inclusion Advisory Committee. It is based on the inputs received from Government of India, other financial sector regulators such as SEBI, IRD and PFRD. So, what are some of the important recommendations? I think this is the most important part for all the banking exams which you are going to appear this year. Financial entities such as banks should provide banking access to every village within 5 km radius of 500 households in hilly area by March 2020. So this is something which the banks have to implement. You have to provide banking access to every village within 5 km radius of 500 households. So that's the basic minimum criteria of providing a bank in the area. Public credit registry is a database of credit information of borrowers. It should be made operational by March 2022 so that authorized financial entities can leverage. So credit information, public credit registry is going to be a database wherein every information about the customer is going to be provided. So if a bank wants to give a loan to you, the bank will just go to this registry, put your name and PAN number, your date of birth and will get all your details. How good you make the repayments, how good you are a customer, have you ever defaulted before and on the basis of that you will get customized products, better rate of interest. That will be the benefit. The digital transactions in the country needs to be expanded through better networking of bank branches, banking correspondent outlets, micro ATMs, post terminals. Basically, RBI wants the economy to move towards digital infrastructure, electronic payments through your mobile phones. RBI wants less and less of brick and mortar branches. Reserve Bank of India and the government of India wants people to do transactions over the phone, online, so that the transaction cost is reduced. The bank should undertake periodic review of their existing products and adopt a customer-centric approach while designing and developing financial product. So any product which will be designed by the bank will have only one and one focus, which is customer-centric. Customer will be the most important player. There should be a convergence of objectives of national rural livelihood and urban livelihood mission to deepen financial inclusion through integrated approach. So both these programs will be integrated to help bring more financial inclusion. A robust customer service grievance redressal mechanism at different levels helps the banks in timely redressal of grievance. So that's all for the report. I'm sure this report is certainly going to be a very important report, especially for the entrance examinations which are coming this year. RBI, NABARD, many other public sector banks which are going to have great openings this year. And these are the questions which will definitely be asked because it is not only related to the policy level but also covers a lot of important topics such as financial inclusion, financial literacy, 
uh, digital infrastructure, what the government wants, what RBI wants. So these are the things which you should be knowing if you are preparing for a competitive exams. Thank you.